All right, this tutorial is for people who are brand new to Unreal Engine. And I'm just gonna show you how to navigate around and what everything does. So starting off, if you wanna move around in Unreal Engine, you're gonna use the right mouse button, W, to go forward, S to go backwards, A to strafe left, and D to strafe right. So get your fingers there, W-A-S-D, holding down the right mouse button, and then Q and E are gonna go vertical, up and down. Q down, E up. As you're moving forward and backwards with W and S, spin the scroll wheel on top of your mouse to increase or decrease the speed at which you move forward and backwards. When you select an object, if you hit the F key on your keyboard, it will focus your view right on there. To rotate around an object, as I'm doing now, hold down Alt and left mouse click and drag. And by doing that, you can quickly jump around to various parts of your level, look at objects. It's a lot easier to do that than to just um, use the right click and WASD all the time. Once you're comfortable with moving around, the next thing you're going to want to experiment with is transformations. So there already are some cubes and other things on the level. If we want to change the location of a cube, you can do so by clicking on the cube. And you'll notice that it can move if you click on any of these arrows on one axis, so either on the X or Y, sorry, X or Y axis or the Z axis, which would be the vertical one in Unreal. Now you'll notice though that it doesn't quite align with the object. And that is because this is aligned to the global movement of the X and Y, the grid itself. So you can see the grid here. If I wanted it to align with the object space instead, and I wanted to move not that direction, but the direction this object faces, I could do so by clicking off of the, uh, I could, sorry, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Cycles, um, so that now it's no longer a global transformation, it's a local transformation. So it actually looks at the object and it will move it left and right depending on the way the object is oriented or facing. Um, so this can be kind of useful. A lot of students forget about this button right here, but it often can be a lot help, more helpful. You can select two axes at the same time. You'll notice there's kind of a square that rests between these two. So if I wanted to select both of those axes, I can click on that square, and now I can move it anywhere, but it'll stay right where it is vertically. And I could also choose these two axes if I wanted to, or these two. It'll stay in that line, but it can go up and down, or forwards and backwards. W, without holding down Alt, when you click on an object, pulls out your uh, location transformations. E is going to pull up your rotations. So you can rotate it on the X, Y, or Z axes. You'll notice that the rotation right now follows the object's rotation. And if I wanted it to instead be the global rotation, I would just click on this button and it will go back to global. So now it will rotate along a global axis rather than on whichever direction the object happens to be facing. The third type of transformation that we can make is by hitting R. And this is going to be uh, changing the scale of the object. So I can change the scale again globally. Oh no, it doesn't let me on this. Never mind. Okay, 
So I can change the scale on the object uh, on the, what is that, the y, z axis, the y axis, or the x axis. And I can also um, select two axes at the same time. So if I know I want it to stay that high, I can select just those two. And that way it won't get any taller. So I can keep it thin. And again, just expand it out this way. But it doesn't get any taller or shorter. So again, you can do one, two, or three um, planes at the same time. Now that this has gotten rotated in such an odd way, it's a little hard to work with. But c'est la vie. Um, another thing you're going to want to do often is holding down W or tapping W to go into uh, movement mode, location transformation. I'm going to hold down Alt. Before I click on this, I'm going to hold down Alt, and then I'm going to drag, and you'll see that it's made a duplicate. So if you hold down Alt before you start dragging, it'll make a duplicate. If you start dragging and then hit Alt, it does not make a duplicate. Try holding down Shift and moving an object, and you'll see that the camera follows along with the object. So if you need to move an object far away and you want to just stay with it, that's a nice, easy way. Again, that was by holding down Shift. And again, remember F to focus on an object. Now, when I move these objects next to each other, I might have a situation where I want them to be, to be perfectly touching. But how do I know when they're perfectly touching? Well, you don't. There's not really an easy way for you to do that. Um, I mean, there are ways, but the, the easiest way is to use snaps. And these objects have been built in units that are easy to measure. So this is going to be probably like um, a 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters. You can see it right here under scale. Which means that we can set our, if we set our, uh, transformations here to snap to the grid every 50, we should be able to boom, boom, snap those right together because this is 150 centimeters, I think. Sometimes I forget the units. And so they should snap perfectly together like that. So if I really want them to not be any gap, I don't want it to overlap at all, I can again just set my, um, sorry, I should have done that before I moved them. Set this to 150 or to 50 and make sure you have this yellow thing checked and they'll snap together perfectly. And that's how you can build really big complex uh, spaces. Obviously, you can also stretch the object, but um, that does cause problems, and I'll show you what those problems are. We're occasionally going to want to um, put a material on here. So if I did like a grid material, you can see that these little squares appear, right? Now, if I stretch the object, gross, right? We don't like that. So what instead we do is we tile the object by making duplicates of it. Stretching is generally something we should avoid. Um, there are times when it's okay, depending on whether the material will tile by itself. But uh, we like to build, this is called modular structures. We'll get more into that later. Um, that's pretty much good for now. I think I want you guys to have a chance to explore that and to experiment with that. If you want to have some fun and throw in some other shapes, we have spheres. You can always hit the end key on your keyboard and that will push it right down to the bottom there. And if you want to turn on physics on an object, because right now if I hit play, 
That object's not going anywhere. Uh, what you can do is you can go down, if you click on the object and you go to your details panel, you just go down to physics and say simulate physics. And if you want to get um, a little bit more experimental, go to materials and you can try different materials out as well. So now this ball will roll as these blocks are moved. There we go. Take a, uh, get creative, build some cool stuff, and then take a screenshot.